Hey, that's actually right, Nathan. That's right. Zeros are also known as x-intercepts. Do you know why? Because on the x-axis, y is 0. 0 is an x-intercept through the same thing. Also somewhat synonymous with factors. Factors are just a different form of an x-intercept. That's all they are. So, if you, look at the if you look at the graph, you'll see where it crosses three times. By the way, it's 3x cubed. You know how many zeros 3x cubed has? Three. I've talked about that. I haven't actually introduced that theorem, but I've talked about it. I'm pretty sure you can tell me two of them. Two and four. The other one would be a guess, wouldn't it? I wouldn't guess. It. All right. So your known zeros are x equals 2 and x equals 4. If you don't like the way I spell zero, you can put an e in there. It can also be spelled z-e-r-o-e-s. That's where it can be. Uh, by the way, if two known zeros are x equals 2 and x equals 4, what are two known factors? No, no, no. zeros. Factors are x minus 2 and x minus 4. Change signs and intervences. Not that it matters because we're going to do some better division. How do you do long division? You can do long division, you need factors. If it's a better division, you need x values. Big difference in two. Since they're nice and simple, it's x equals something, just do some better division. At the same time, I'm going to tell you to divide out the negative 3 first. Truth is, it doesn't matter. You can pick either one you want. And how do you do some take division? You make you drop, multiply, and you add. Until you die. Multiply and add. Drop the negative 3, the product's negative 6, the sum is 14, the product's 28, the sum is negative 8, the product is negative 16, and the sum is 0. And you got a 0. Are you surprised? You shouldn't be. Because you were supposed to get a zero. It was a factor. It was a zero. Okay, we'll just continue on. This time we'll pull out the four. And we just follow the same thing. Drop, multiply, and add. Four times negative three is a negative twelve. Sum is two. Product is eight. Bam, there's a zero. I don't think a lot of kids are writing down the same things I do, because if they did, more of them would know it. So I ask the, I'll ask this constantly when I do synthetic division, just trying to get kids to remember it. What's the zero? Remainder. What precedes a remainder? The constant. The constant. And what precedes the constant? X. Now, we already had two known factors of x minus 2 and x minus 4. Here's the last one. That's right, Bob. That quotient is the last factor. Negative 3x plus 2. The goal is to find zero, so you set the whole blasted factor polynomial equal to zero. Two of them you already know, right? You know the first two factors, you know their results that you use the result three of them. What do you do with the last factor to solve? Oh, zero product property. Negative 3x plus 2 has to equal what? Zero. And that's a two step equation anybody ought to be able to do. Talk to you. Who's in the camera? Which you to? What's your x value? Two thirds. There you go. That's using a graph, which is really awesome. Graphs make things faster. Remember yesterday we guessed, we guessed, we guessed, we guessed some more. Good times, right? Graphs take away all the guessing. It happens. Uh, 
Ryan is surprisingly good at guessing factors. Oh yeah, the He is surprisingly good at guessing. We're going to merge the uh, fundamental theorem of algebra into the extension. That way we just have to write one big note. Because it's the same thing. Somebody just a couple hundred years later decided to modify the original fundamental theorem of algebra. So the fundamental theorem of algebra says for a polynomial f of x equals some x, we'll just say ax to the n. There are n solutions. I have talked about it quite a bit. I talk about it all the time. I ask you what x to the cubed has, three answers. I talk about it all the time. But you should have seen it in Algebra 1. As soon as they started talking about anything other than x equals, they should have been talking about the fundamental theorem of algebra. All right, so some are real. Some might be imaginary, better known as complex. And some might be repeated. There is such a thing as a repeated solution. I'm pretty sure y'all's memory isn't as good as mine, but uh, yesterday we went over a homework problem out here, and there was a factor that happened twice. It was 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. I remember that. You may not. That's a repeated solution. If you have a, something that factors as 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1, don't you get the same x value twice? That's what you call a repeated solution. So hence why some might be repeated. But you're going to have at least n of the solutions. So let's just do an easy example of this and we'll move forward. Example, f of x equals negative 3x to the 142nd power. How many solutions? 142 solutions. I can't make this any easier. That is one of the easiest things a kid can learn in algebra 2. And I feel like it's on your next test. I have to go back and look at the twin, but I'm almost certain it is. Yeah, but I've given that every single year, and like one in four kids misses it. It would be something like x to the 50th has how many answers. Of course, I make it multiple choice. I choose stuff like two. Well, if it was x to the 50th, what would you choose? 50. I, I don't know how many drugs you have to take not to get this theorem. But it's got to be a lot. Doesn't it? No. It's got to be a lot of drugs. All right. Find all complex solutions of x to the 5th minus 4x to the 4th, blah, 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 blah. Let's talk about this off to the side. How many solutions? Five. Now, yesterday in your notes, there was a circular rectangular rectangle that told you what the general idea was. What do you have to reduce a polynomial down to? And it's not on your phone. Quadratic. Get off your phone. We have to reduce x to the fifth to x to the second by factoring or dividing. How many zeros? Three. I don't know why I wrote x cubed. It's supposed to be x squared. I hope you understand that. You've got to pull three zeros. Now remember, some might be real, some might be imaginary, some might be complex, okay? Your theorem from yesterday only finds real zeros. It also doesn't find anything weird. It just finds nice-looking zeros. That's all it finds. We are going to kind of go over yesterday, and then we're going to cheat by looking at a graph to speed this up, because you have graphing calculators, don't you? So we're going to cheat a little bit, all right? Uh, I do want you to remember how to make your list. 
create the list of potential zeros for this thing, you do factors of C over factors of A. So what are your factors of C? Well, what is C, actually? 14, that's right, Alex. And we're sitting over the factors of 1. Because in front of x to the fifth, there is the understood 1. Not everybody understands the understood. It's amazing how many kids don't know all that. Anyways, factors of 14 in increasing order. One, two, seven, fourteen. So we did yesterday's content here. We just sit here and guess and guess and guess and guess and guess, would we? Until we found how many? Three. No, not all five. You didn't be able to guess all five. You're assuming there's five real answers. That's your first mistake. This says find all complex. That means that some of them are what? Imaginary. Calculator, even you, your theorem doesn't talk about imaginaries. Your theorem doesn't talk about things with right levels. Your theorem talks about nice looking zeros. And again, we're going to cheat here today because I just want to speed this up. So get your TI 84 out. <coughs> then go to y equals and type in the polynomial. Hopefully, you know where the y equals button is. I had a kid ask that today. Then I had a kid ask me where the X button was. But it happens. There actually is such a thing as a stupid question. But you should ask the stupid question, shouldn't you? Should you ask stupid questions? You, if, you don't, if you honestly don't know them, yes, you should ask them. You should ask stupid questions. Will teachers laugh at you? Will everybody in this world laugh at you? Yes, but it's still better to know the answer. It's still better to know. Because then you're not stupid anymore. Now you know it. So anyways, you need to go to y equals. You need to type in the polynomial. Remember how you're supposed to zoom? Zoom 6. Of course, you got the color additions up down, down there. I don't. But you should see a graph looks kind of like mine. If it doesn't look like mine, you have a typo. The overall shape should be there. All right? should look very similar to mine. This needs to be talked about in quite a bit of detail. It's actually supposed to be Thursday's lesson, but I introduced it today, hoping you remember it by Thursday. Never hurts to see something more than twice. If we had enough time, we would sit here and we would guess and we would guess factors and we'd only find two. Because how many times does that thing cross the x-axis? Twice. And we needed three, right? We would have been kind of, what, what, what do we do? We only found two. So we need to talk about this graph. There's two different types of x-intercepts happening here. They are different. There's this guy right here, and then there's that guy right there. The difference is, is one of them is touching the x-axis, and one of them is crossing the x-axis. The one on the left is touching the x-axis. And the other one is simply crossing or passing through. Most math teachers say crossing, but it crosses the x-axis. And that's an important note. Uh, the reason is, is because what they mean as far as multiplicity or repetition. When you talk about touching the x-axis, the emphasis is on the t. Because it means it happens at least twice. So my zeros are x equals negative 1, and it has a multiplicity of 2. I need to talk about that, and I'm going to. My other zero is x equals 2, and it has a multiplicity of 1. I'm about to talk about multiplicity, okay? M stands for multiplicity. By the way, if you take 1 and 2 and add them together, you get 3, don't you? Isn't that what we needed? That was the original goal? So multiplicity, which is abbreviated M, I just don't like typing it or writing it. 
is the number of times a zero or factor, however you want to think about it, happens. That's all multiplicity is. Number of times a zero or a factor happens. And I mentioned touching and crossing. Touches are even multiplicity. What's the smallest even number? Two. They happen at least, and that is the correct wording, at least twice. Touches twice. What do they have in common? T. That's how you remember it. Touches happen at least twice. Crosses are odd multiplicity. What's the smallest odd number? One. They happen at least once. So that's where the idea that multiplicity is coming from. You look at a graph and it touches, bam, happens at least twice. But it's even multiplicity. It could be 4, 6, 8, 10. If it crosses, that's once. But it's odd. It could be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. It's whatever you need it to be in the context of the original problem. It's whatever you need it to be. And this will make more sense as you do some of these. But now it turns out I actually have three zeros, don't I? If you look at the multiplicity, you have three zeros. One of them just happens twice. So now we're in a position to do synthetic division. We'll divide out the two first since it happens once. It happens once, I would just do it first. Hopefully by now you guys have a handle on some heavy division. If you don't, you're as special as your mom said you were. Well, I wrote one, it's supposed to be two. And I personally have gotten tired of saying drop off by a but I've done this a long time too. The acronym, if you forgot again, is DMA. So we drop, we multiply, and we add. 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 And we're not surprised we got a zero because it was an X intercept. And X intercepts are. Zeros. They are. Time to hit it with a negative one. Let's repeat the algorithm. What's easier, by the way, fifth grade long division or junior synthetic division? Synthetic division. No? On synthetic? No. You're not running with me, are you? I don't know. Because if you are, you need to get away from everybody. I'm not going to tell you to wear a mask. I mean, I have my personal views on that. But if you're running a fever, it's well known you're contagious. We drop, we add, and then we multiply. And we just repeat until we're dead. Three, three, negative three, seven, negative seven, zero. That actually spells wheat. Negative one there. That might be what you're Anyways, how many times does negative one happen? Twice. Hit it again. It is a legit repeated factor, which means you can factor it out more than once. If that factor happens twice, do some better division twice. I hope that makes sense. Hey, guess what? It worked again, didn't it? All right, cool. Let's talk about what we've done. We had an x value of 2, which means we had a factor of x minus 2, right? We had an x value of negative 1, which means we had a factor of x plus 1. But that one happened how many times? Twice. So after we factored out those three polynomials, what were we left with? Remainder constant x, x squared. 
remainder constant x x squared. What do you got here? There's a lot of kids that struggle with this little piece right here. Going from just numbers to the reduced polynomial. You need to figure that out. It's not as bad as you want it to be. I get that it's foreign. It's actually probably the first new thing you've learned this year. Well, no, because you guys didn't get factoring anything. But it's supposed to be the first new thing you actually learn. It really is. You're actually supposed to have done a little bit of long division algebra one. Did it happen? No, it never has. It's supposed to be, it just never has. All right. Well, x squared minus four x plus seven factor. Mm -hmm. Ain't no factor of seven gets you made before. What do you do? Quadratic formula. Let's see. We have opposite b. What would opposite b be? Four plus or minus square root. You about to square a negative? Do you care about the negativity? Minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 7, all sitting pretty over twice a while. Anytime you see me do this, I'll break things apart in here, which is what I do. 4 over 2, plus or minus, what's in that radical? Maybe 12 is right. Don't be the kid who throws away the negative sign because you don't know what to do. I know why kids do that. That has to work with like when you were younger and you were adding and subtracting negatives and you some calculators. And I know why you do it. It's because you were breaking math from a young age. That's imaginary root 12, and it is sitting over 2. Can you divide 12 by the 2? No, it's in prison. But you simplify the radical. 4 times 3, what's root of 4? Two. This is 2i root 3 over a 2. i root 3. 4 over 2, by the way, was 2, plus or minus i root 3. How many answers are there? 2. One of them is 2 plus i root 3. One of them is 2 minus i root 3. What's the word that describes their relationship? Nope. Those are things that don't make sense. Conjugates. Those are conjugates of each other. Which brings us to our next slide. Conjugate theorems. The first one is written correctly. The second one is not. It's supposed to be the complex conjugate theorem. And off to the side there, if you have to turn your head again, you're special. It says weird zeros have conjugates. They do. If a zero is something nice like two or three tenths, it doesn't have a conjugate. It's not weird. You might think it's weird, but it's not. But if it's something with a radical, or if it's something that's imaginary, it has a conjugate. What's the conjugate of a plus root b? A minus root b. What's the conjugate of a plus bi? A minus bi. They always happen in pairs. Weird zeros always happen in pairs. Always. Conjugate pairs. That's useful because if you know one, guess what else you know? No. It was about imaginary numbers. Which is why something more weird than another word conjugate. Math speaking. Alright, this one's going to be fun. Hopefully we finish it. Write a polynomial function f of least degree that has leading coefficient of 2, which means the a value, which is always in the very beginning, isn't it? It's 2. Uh, where 4 and 2 minus root 5 are zeros. So I've kind of got this laid out. There's a question there. Is there another known zero? What's the other known zero? 2 plus root 5. 2 minus root 5 is weird. You don't even know what it is, do you? Anybody know what 2 minus root 5 or 2, yeah, 2 minus root 5 is? About all I can tell you is it's negative. About it. I have no idea what the number is. It's weird. You can't look at it and know what it is. You can have an idea. So if something's weird, write this conjugate. 
The other known zero is two plus root five because these things happen in pairs. Now we're gonna write this thing out in factored form. Call it whatever you want, call it f of x, call it bob, nobody cares. But what's the leading coefficient? Two. Then we're gonna start taking zeros and making factors out of them. Four was a nice easy zero. If four is a zero, what's the factor? It has been for a long time. If you enter parentheses, what happens to signs? Change. Now here's where kids get thrown off. I don't know why. Bella just said if you enter parentheses, signs change. I am telling you if you enter parentheses, signs change. If Jesus was in this room, he would tell you that if you had a point to see signs change, okay? It is the truth. Two minus root five is a zero. What's the factor? What happens to signs? Don't doubt it. What's the factor? Don't forget the X. It's x minus 2 plus root 5. What happened to signs? They, they didn't they part. They flipped. They changed. Okay? The one that your God-given brain was able to figure out because you know about conjugate theorem. 2 plus root 5 is the 0. What's the factor? What's that, Milo? I agree with the minus root 5. That's changing. The full factor. There's an X. What happens to sign on the 2? Nope. I'm looking at this one right here. What happens to minus 2 minus root 5? And kids struggle with this. I swear that's how easy it is. If you enter parentheses, irregardless of however you feel about it, what do you do with signs? Change it. That's how hard it is to make factors. Did you say irregardless? I said irregardless. Why? I don't know. It popped in my head. Not a word. It's not? No. Why well, did you use that way too long? Whatever, whatever boats are floating. But whatever boats are floating. So you like the English language, huh? Yeah. That was my low on the ACT. It was only a 28. Grammar is not my thing. Hmm? Oh, I'm going to say it now for sure. It's his class. And you <laughs> Since I know it aggravates you, I'm going to push that button. I'm actually a fan of bullying. <laughs> Put it in standard form. This is not the yeah. Focus on the last two factors. What mm -hmm. property is. You're not going to make a problem with that. You're going to tie out your lips. You're going to use the triple distributive property. That's right. Focus on those right there. That's what I do. Start there and then work your way left. Because that's ugly. But the nice thing is, is ugly factors simplify. There's going to be a lot of stuff that cancels out. It won't look that ugly. And what we'll do is we'll just start off by Xing every single piece. What do you get if you x, x minus 2 minus root 5? x squared minus 2x minus root 5x. I'm going to write that as minus x root 5. I like to, for some reason when it comes to radicals, I like to put the variable in front. Otherwise, I think it's in the radical. So I just x everything. What's the next thing to do? Negative 2 everything. It's not a hard process. It's just repetitive. So I negative 2 everything. What do I get if I negative 2 everything? Minus 2x plus 4. Negative times a negative is positive. 2 root 5. 2 times root 5 is 2 root 5. It's not bad. And what's the last thing to do? Root 5, and that's something a lot of kids will struggle with, because it's just a blasted radical. Root 5 times x? Plus x root 5. Minus 2 root 5. 
That's right, well, a minus five. Uh, second period, boy, they struggled with that. Root five times root five in geometry, we were taught, you multiply a radical by itself, you get to the other side, you don't believe in the last hand trail. Third grade, positive times negative is negative. It's a miracle a lot of you all pass in there. Now, we're going to take nine things and probably reduce it down to about four. Is it three? I don't remember. Is there anything you can throw out? X root five, one of them is positive, one of them is negative. I kind of like that blue. Anything else? Two root fives, one of them is positive, one of them is negative. Yeah, it is going to be three, three times. Yep. See, that other things are in the same side. All right. Now we're at two times x minus four. Times x squared minus four x minus one. What do y'all want to do next? Please don't say distribute for two. Yeah, this would this would be the double distributor. It's not actually foiling. It's something with two times something with three. Foil is a shortcut for the product of two binomials. I always say constants for last because if you make these numbers bigger, what happens to all your computations? They get a little rougher, don't they? So save doubling for last. Everybody can double. Save it for last. It's easy. If you x everything, you got x cubed minus 4x squared minus x. And after you x everything, what do you do? One. Sorry, negative four. That'll give you a negative four x squared plus a sixteen x plus a four. And it's not necessarily a hard skill, it just takes a little bit of time. It's already all it is. I know how kids feel about this. I personally am not a fan of doing it, but it's not hard. All right. The x cubed is x cubed. There's what, negative 8x squared? Looks like there's 15x. And then plus 4. You guys should check them. Then double. I can say that. You should save that for last. It's easy to double. But if you do it too early, everything gets harder. So if you double it, 2x cubed minus 16x to the second plus 30x plus 8. And congratulations, that is one more day of algebra 2, which means one fewer days on this day ahead, right? And that's where we'll stop today. You're almost half done. Oh, has it been that bad, Alex? I should graduate. Irregardless? Yeah, that way. I